Yeah, so I'm trying to think, you know. <laughs> so my workflow is, is normally, you know, start with reference images if you can get orthographics, that's always best because then you see it from each side. And I normally always start with um, just line, line sketches and doing a, a layer that's just all lines. And so a lot of times what I'll do is, is pull up the, actually I'm gonna grab a sheet real quick because this could be easier. So I'll start with like an orthographic, like lateral view and uh, do like just the, the 2D sketch. And a lot of times I'll, I'll sketch on a plane so that it's, it's constrained to a, a single edge. And then once I have that profile, I will rotate it and do a new plane and get this uh, shape of the outsole and, and kind of those things that are really constrained to design, like the proportions that, um, you know, need to, need to stay there. And, and a lot of times we'll base these off of blueprints we've done that have, you know, the last line in there, we'll bring in a, a 3D last, things like that. And now I'm at the point where I've started to make uh, template files that have some of those basic constraints. And then I can go in and, and know that, you know, it's somewhat constrained within the shape of what it should be. Um, from there, when you have, you know, just a two like that and like that, I'll normally duplicate this bottom one and figure out my midsole top line um, in 3D. And then something I like to do is just kind of uh, go in really loosely with like kind of the details I'm thinking about, especially if I'm designing it, I don't really know yet. And so I'll use like the line tool and just kind of draw in 3D over it and give it like a wireframe. So kind of creating like a, a skeleton. And then um, from there, make a new layer uh, drop the opacity normally on the sketches and now I'm using almost I think all sub D just because it's 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 great <laughs> and so I'll go in with like the soul and, and do like a plane and then multiply it over uh, loop it and then uh, just go in from there and start making the components in, in separate layers and, um, now that there's even more layers it's even easier to organize things and so that's a huge plus um, and yeah, once you once you get like the the foundation, I guess, of somewhat of like the, the shape of the soul, and then um, getting the upper proportions right for what you want, that that's when it becomes really fun because there's you know infinite amount of possibilities you could do to it, and you know um, keep editing it and tweaking it. And a lot of times I'll duplicate the actual whole chassis, I guess you could call it, and then do like iterations on that and figure out you know what direction I want to go with, and um, it can be. It can be really easy to jump right into uh, doing like sweeps and and you know sub D like actual geometry, but I think that it's really important before you do that. It can be really important to keep sketching um, really loosely in three D on the on the last or on the sole to figure out you know what actual shapes you're looking for, um, and that's the same process I use if I'm recreating uh, a sketch in in Gravity Sketch um, is is that and then it's just kind of another level of figuring out how to make some of those details and and um and then also as far as figuring out you know when to export to keyshot um i like to get it to like as high of a fidelity as i can in gravity sketch and something i've been really into now is uh actually like doing real stitching in in there um and figuring out how it would be manufactured a lot of the times and that's something that's been a pretty recent development for me is, is thinking about not just how to make something look cool but also how is this actually going to be made and kind of thinking about that and so gravity sketch has been great for that because i've been able to model pieces and then you know take them out and think like okay how is this going to be stitched to this piece and then actually being able to model that in gravity sketch is super easy um where i do end up exporting it to keyshot is doing uh, a lot of like outsole patterns and stuff like that. Um, I'll use like displacement maps and uh, that's been really powerful for getting some, it's just a, a little bit quicker than doing it by hand and a little bit more constrained. Um, and then for materiality and things like that, but almost all of it is, is straight out of key shot, which is, which is great. And a lot of times it needs, you know, really minor tweaks might be slightly changing the proportions or um, there is a little bit of a difference between what it looks like in your headset versus on a computer screen. And sometimes it can be deceiving. I remember 
uh, when I started doing a lot of shoes and gravity sketch, I'd be like, this is awesome. Then I'd pull it out and it would be, you know, twisted and <laughs> not quite right. But I think that's something that just comes with time.